Yeah, hello. Develop project charter is the first process under the process group initiation and it is also linked to integration management knowledge area. Develop project charter is the first process under initiation. That means when we start a project, we have only the sponsor available and the sponsor creates a project charter. The typical inputs to the project charter are a statement of work, which is a high level description of the work to be done. Then a business case, like what is the investment we are making, how much time it will take to get the investment back, what are all the cash flows, and what are the net present values, benefit cost ratios, payback period. So these ratios we'll discuss as we progress. Then uh, we should know the organizational process assets we may be using uh, for the projects like any reusable component, any intellectual property, lessons learned from past projects. So all these things can fall under the organizational process assets. Then the agreements which is signed between the customer and the supplier. Uh, it could be, if you are a supplier, it could be, be, it could be between you and the customer. Uh, so any sort of agreement signed with respect to this particular project, they can act as an input. And we are talking about enterprise environmental factors. Before getting into a project, I should know about the environment under which I have to operate, like the political climate, the national holidays, the culture, uh, the work ethics, uh, the, the pollution norms, the labor laws of that country. So all these things comes under uh, enterprise and environmental factor. Then we use our expert judgment and sometimes facilitation techniques like meetings, brainstorming, uh, those kind of things. And then we come out with a project charter. The typical contents, what all things gets into the charter, the charter contains the, the product vision, a high level description, why are we doing this, what is that we are trying to achieve, and the business case of the project using a very specific numbers like the investment, the payback period, the net present value, the benefit cost ratios, all these things must get into a good business case. And sometimes we mention about the alternatives considered before getting into freezing onto this particular project idea, like a swimming pool versus a club membership, or metro rail versus a water transport, those kind of things. Then uh, the charter, in the, in the charter, we document the assumptions we make, like expert manpower is available, or this is the assumed climatic conditions. So those kind of assumptions gets captured in the project charter. And the constraints of time, cost, and scope, and if there are other constraints, that also gets into the charter. The key stakeholders, their names, their roles, their contact details, everything gets into the charter and the major milestones with dates that also can get into the charter. So again, take it from me, these things are not mandatory. Project to project, we can customize uh, these things. But by and large, these are the things that gets into the charter. And what are the key points to be remembered? Through the charter only, we are appointing the project manager. The project sponsor prepares a charter, identify the project manager, and the charter contains the project manager's name, roles and responsibilities, everything gets into the charter. And because of this, because the charter is signed by the project sponsor or the senior management representative, then we say it gives authority to the project manager. This is a very valid document and approved by the sponsor. Any changes to the charter must be re-approved by the sponsor. The charter gives better continuity for the project. Otherwise, if the charter is not there, or if the project chartering process is not there, anybody can start a project. Now, tomorrow, let us say, we have made a lot of assumptions, uh, and the sponsor changes, uh, then the project manager can be in trouble. So, and the vice versa too, suddenly a project manager changes, 
then if the, all the assumptions, all these things, if it is documented, that gives better continuity to the project. Again, to summarize, pro develop project charter as part of initiation process group and integration management knowledge area. And uh, the inputs to charter are the statement of work, business case, organizational process assets, agreements, and enterprise environmental factors. And we use the tools and techniques like expert judgment and facilitation techniques. And typically the charter contains uh, all these things like the, uh, the product vision, the business case, uh, the alternatives analysis, assumptions, constraints, key stakeholders, and the major milestone. And the key points to be remembered about the charter are it appoints the project manager, it is prepared by the sponsor, it gives authority to the project manager, approved by the sponsor, and any changes to the charter also must be reapproved by the sponsor. Thank you.